Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to our final word. Garden Report from Chicago. Celtics beat the Bulls 129-112. Talked about that in our last video as well as the debuts of Xavier Tillman and Jaden Springer in this game for, with the Celtics. Uh, as for the Boston's All-Stars coming out of the break, uh, returning from their couple of days off that they got after Sunday's uh, showcase. Interesting conversations about both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. In Tatum's case, the MVP argument that started on first take uh, continued for several days here. Tatum addressing it a few times, irked by the 2022 finals being held against him, I guess in Brian Windhorst's uh, words, alluding to the perception around Tatum in a race like that. And in Brown's case, the lackluster duck dunk contest, which he shrugged off today, said he'll do it again, F it. Uh, if no one else wants to do it, he'll return, and if they want him back next year, he'll do it for a second consecutive year, uh, as he talked to us this morning. You can check out uh, that interview on CLNS Media here, but we at the Garden Report continue to find the dynamic between the two interesting at All-Star Weekend. So I'm mingling in different circles in the uh, visible moments where you saw them on the court or in practices or whatever else. Tatum kind of kicking it with Bam and some of his friends. You know, Jalen uh, involved Donovan Mitchell and I even shot on the other side of the court pregame with Giannis. Uh, so they uh, found some friends to interact with and certainly they spend plenty of time together here on the Celtics. And uh, at the dunk contest, collaborate on a dunk that was a little clunky. Uh, Tatum ended up bolting after that. Uh, Alu passed to Brown, which a little strange. Probably could have stayed for the later rounds there. Yeah, not trying to drum up controversy here, but did remind us of a conversation we've had going back a while of how close they are, the dynamic between the two, how connected are they on the court. And Tatum addressed it in an interview with ESPN, how far that's come, how much they've worked on that, and getting to the point where they can both lead this team together. They've both said it over the years, and we've been talking about this for years now. Not as much of a topic as the team has become a lot more successful, and you've started to see them play better together here. Uh, but do you need to be best friends? Do you need to be that connected to lead a team to a championship? There's certainly plenty of examples, including one right behind me here, six right behind me, frankly, uh, the Bulls and the Shaq Kobe Lakers that uh, Phil Jackson also led doing the highest possible level of winning with stars who at times despised each other. And that's certainly never been the case between Brown and Tatum. But they've also clearly and admittedly never been you know, the same in line, best of friends. You know, different interests, different people. Joe Mazzulla affirmed that today when I asked him about uh, that topic as well. For him, I, know, I don't know how much you watched of the All Star game or Zero. Just them in the dunk contest together. Just Zero. The, the amount of time they've been able to spend on you know their relationship. Jason talked a little bit about their just them becoming closer. You know them sort of talking about things more. Just how have you kind of seen that evolve in your time here? The most important thing is separating the two. They've been lumped together for such a long time, and they're different people. They're different players. They're different types of leaders. And just because they they're both young and they both play a relatively same position, they've always been the two of them. And a goal of mine has been to separate them. They're different in how they go about things, and they don't have to be uh, similar. They don't have to be best friends. Uh, what they have is a, a mutual respect for each other, the way they go about their uh, professionalism, the way they prepare for games, uh, and their understanding and their growing, understanding that they need each other and need their teammates. And so they have to be able to express who they are differently and not constantly be compared to each other. They're not the same. At the same time, they're two pillars of our team, and uh, they're both doing a great job growing is how they need each other and how they need the people around them. But also, like, they got to be the best players on the court for us, and I think they've done a good job of that. Take the first step to visibly thicker hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off first month subscription. Once again, $10 off first month subscription. Free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and use the code GARDEN. Once again, $10 off Nutrafol.com slash men. Use the code GARDEN. So it's interesting. We're going to discuss it again right until that final stage of the season. Their dynamic at the top, and listen, there's on-court implications here. You know, they play that same position. 
you're always trying to create that activity between them and Porzingis has done a great job connecting their games this year whereas in the past you know you always have that conversation of you know if they screen for each other you know you switch in the best defenders on the other side it's not creating the same leverage as you know a guy like Porzingis is uh, creating in those positions and then the off-court dynamic their leadership capabilities both individually and together have come a long way and I think you're seeing both, whether it's Brown's defensive emphasis or you know Tatum's accountability after losses or whatever it might be. They have made leaps and bounds there. Uh, but when you run into adversity, you know, when there is a bad, bad loss in the playoffs and you know, you've got to be on the same page about what to do next, you've got to have those tough conversations, I only thought of it just because of you know, what we heard from Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, at the All-Star game, Durant saying that the only reason they've been able to succeed as quickly as they have in Phoenix is that they're close off the court, they talk off the court. Lillard and Giannis, maybe not the best example, given the issues they've had on the court, but Lillard said it's been important through that All-Star weekend to talk, come together, discuss those things. And then Holiday even to open this year, Drew Holiday said, I don't know how you can have an on-court dynamic without an off-the-court dynamic. Uh, you know, something to that effect. So I've heard it a couple of times this year, you know, the contrast of what Missoula says there. And I think there's truth to both. Again, we don't know how much these guys talk and interact off the court, especially on the things that are most important. We just see the fraction uh, that we see here. So I'll put all those caveats on the table, but I do think it's a discussion worth having because it's not going to be the bench that holds this team back from winning a championship. It's not going to be the talent around Brown and Tatum. And Missoula even said at the end of the quote there, it's going to be what they do, how consistent they are, how effective they are leading this team on the court together that gets them to a championship. And are they in that place yet? They're getting there. They're getting there fast. And I think everything we've seen this year shows that they're capable of doing it. But there have been stagnant periods in the playoffs on offense that have cost them championships at this point. Have they done enough around them to work against those things when they happen? Or Brown and Tatum are going to have to find that level of connectivity to ultimately do this, you know, no matter what it is around them. You know, let me know below. Find an interesting discussion. Wrote about CLNSmedia.com. You can check it out there. And uh, we'll, be at, we'll be back in New York, Madison Square Garden, for Celtics Knicks on Saturday. See you then. This has been The Garden Report. I'm Bobby Manning from Chicago. Get your buckets with your first bet at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers... $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA.